and PH Doug McNeil of Tanzania Game Trackers as they make plans to try for a creature older than mankind and perhaps one of the deadliest killers over the past 200 million years. Hey, that's a pretty big one. That's a big truck that. You see it, Chris? Mm -hmm. Right at the yeah. edge. You see, they can pick up the scent. When we were building the blind, they could smell it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Look at that, he just eases off in the water. Just like... Oh my God, I don't know. That's the ultimate stealth machine right there. Look, there he popped up again. And 36, there's 15 right there. Okay. Jack, this will just give us a rough idea yeah. of how big the croc is. Okay. So Now where are you going to put this twine? We'll put the main peg up here. Yeah. And then the twine, what it is, is almost, we just, just to I'll measure put the three distance. or four pegs in the ground. Right. Going around, because these croc come in like that. I got you. Bay. So it'll give us a rough idea. That'll be neat. Hey. Yeah. Daddy. You cool? Hey, Dave, bud. Yeah. Well, Jack, should we make a move? I think yeah. we're about done here. We're set here. Let's, yeah, uh, let's, let's go get set up on yeah. the other side. Set. I can't believe how quickly 21 days have gone by here we are on the last day. It seems like it wasn't that long ago we were just starting this trip. And Jack had started off with a bag. Shooting that buffalo on the first day. Yeah, literally on the first day. Africa's Cape Buffalo has earned the rare distinction of being called Black Death by those familiar with its malicious nature. With ill tempers governed by a hair trigger, these two-ton beasts have killed and maimed more big game hunters in Africa than the rest of the dangerous game combined. Unlike most creatures that muster the courage or insanity to kill humans, the Cape Buffalo has a nasty habit of extracting a vengeance so severe that sometimes the only thing left of its victim is a large, wet, bloody stain where someone was ground into the earth. So it's with some trepidation and big shells chambered that Jack and Doug strike out in search of an old bull. The buffalo here are as big and nasty as anywhere in Africa and their great herds rival the dark continent of old. Man, that's a big herd of buffalo. How I many do you think that is? Jack, I'd say they're a couple of hundred in there. Really? Yeah, it's really, it's a good size herd. That was neat, man. They all passed just right by us. Right, so. We'll get really close I to I didn't them. see anything really big in there. So no. a couple that look like they've been big in a couple of years. Yeah, there's some nice, nice bulls in there, but they're young as well. Yeah. So, no, they need a few. We need to throw that there. There we go. That's one there. You see those cows? should be back this side of it somewhere down there on the left. Okay.
Ideally, Doug and Jack hope to get within good killing range, but not so close as to enter the buffalo's killing range. However, cover and circumstance place them dangerously close. Damn, Jack, he's coming right towards us. Right. How old is that ball? That ball? I mean, he's is about he mature. Yeah, he's about eight or so. I'd imagine that. You know, he's got a so he's good. He's mature. Yeah, he's mature. He's got a decent boss. Yeah, yeah, he's got a good boss on him. Well, what do you think? Give it a try. Yeah, Jack, I think let's take it. You know, it's the first day as well. I'm gonna get over this side. The bull tries to regain its feet, but Jack rushes in and delivers a finishing shot with his 375. You had a nice boss nice on that bull. Look at that. Yeah. See the curl and everything? Yeah. That's Good great. and hard right in the yeah. middle, huh? Yeah. Look at that. He fell with his head wrapped around there like that. Jeez, that's a big animal, huh? Look at the size of this thing. Yeah. He's a good neck though, hey? That's fun, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. That was good fun. Uh, and I mean, he was what, 15 yards? Not more yards. than 25. He was yeah. in bow range. But yeah. I don't know with a bow, you know, he was kind of in the brush. It yeah, yeah. Rather would have been diff difficult. Uh, Look at the neck on this thing. Uh, but, you know, should we pull it? Here we go. Ready? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. It's 9, 10, 11, about 12, 12 across, huh? Yeah. Of course, you go around the curve, it would be yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, it's about 12 or so. 13, 13, 14. Uh, that was fun. Yeah. Now I get some lion bait. You got some lion bait. And, then and then uh, a little back strap, yeah. tenderloins. That's it. We're on our way. We'll keep, keep something in the salt every day. We'll be in good shape. Huh? That's it. That's it. Super. So what do you think? 40? 38? 40? Yeah, he'll go just 39. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah. But you know, he wasn't going to give us much more time. Oh, no, he no. Was ready he, to was, go. he was. Boy, they are come. wide awake. You know, you we were that? behind that bush and everything, and he still looked up, yeah. and he wasn't taking any chances. That's it. Because he didn't know what we were. No. No, not at all. You know, we started hanging those baits, you know, from the buffalo, and I think it was just the next day we got the zebra. Yeah, yeah, it was the very next day. That was a good stock too, you know. I mean, we stayed with those things a long time. There were times where they got our wind and took off, but I mean, you know, eventually we got in the right position and, yeah. and that worked out good. I tell you, you made a good shot on that one as well. Ask any lion or experienced professional hunter, and they'll agree that despite their appearance, zebras are one of the wariest game animals in Africa. Roaming the plains in great herds, their obvious stripes are in fact ideal camouflage in the stark contrast of the savanna brush. Because of their excellent eyesight, uncanny sense of smell, and skittish nature, stalking them in the semi-open grasslands is one of the greater challenges on any safari. Stalking herds like these multiplies the odds. I didn't see any males. Yeah, no, there's definitely, I mean, 
there's not even a dominant male in there. You can I thought really that one to the left for a minute might have been, but uh, you know, it turned finally and walked away. I yeah. couldn't see anything underneath it. No, no. You know, it's with a young one as well. Yeah. So that often indicates that it's a, it's like a female as well. Let's like just that. press on. Then. Yeah. Let's keep going. Using the tall grass, cover and wind to their advantage, they finally slip within range of a feeding herd. There's one behind him. Yeah, there's one behind us. Hold on. Just follow, follow me or turn and look. I can't get him now. Tree's in the way again. Okay, just hold on. There's one behind him now. Ready? High shoulder. Yeah. Not neck. High shoulder. Yeah, he's not gonna get up in here. Let's go. All right. That was good. Yeah. It's him, all right. That was good. Yeah, yeah. That was fun. That was fun. Now we got some more bait. Yeah. And another nice. rug. Look how his ears bitten off. Yeah. Shows. I mean, they they vicious. They get vicious. I mean, you see them fighting. Yeah. They bite the hell out of one another. But he's got a nice nice skin as well. Look at that. And we'll just still yep. there. So, all right. So we like to see them go down. <laughs> Look how worn down these incisors are. He's really You old. know, they're just flat right across there. So what do you think? 12, yep. 15, something like, like that. that. But you could see he was a dominant male as well. Right. You know, I mean, you shot him and all the others just stood. Yeah, yeah right. Off. They didn't run off at all. And you can see his ear here. Look at that. Yeah, that's oh, that nice. Uh, Great. Good, old good shooting, Jack. All right, well, let's get working yeah, on some bait. That's, good. that's it. Perfect. Without a question, we've had a great safari. I mean, this thing has been action-packed. If we can finish it off today with a croc, that'll be outstanding. But I tell you, there's no question. That's that's the, one of the highlights of my whole hunting hunting career. Yeah, there are not too many people who shoot a line like that in this day and age. I can tell you that. No, it's uh, fantastic. But the fantastic way the way it. the Friedkins are doing this thing, and the way you guys are handling it, that's that's just the start of many great lions to come. Truly the dark continent's king of beasts, free-ranging lions roam here in abundance. They are the only wild predator in Africa fierce and strong enough to regularly kill Cape Buffalo. Big males can weigh over 500 pounds, and hunting them sometimes requires facing an entire pride. The first sign of lions is often spotted in the air. Vultures mark the location of fresh kills. And for lion hunters like Doug and Jack, it's an invitation to investigate. But wading into the thick brush to check for lions on their kill can also be an invitation to disaster. So with guns ready, they cautiously inch closer to the mayhem. The brown fur turns out to be a lone hyena trying unsuccessfully to protect his meal from the hordes of vultures. 
it's a sign that the lions have already feasted and left. Nonetheless, our hunters move in with measured caution for a closer look. So you think that's last night, huh? Yeah, this is last night. Yeah. Boy, they cleaned it right up, didn't they? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, these birds, there won't be anything left by the end of today. Yeah. So they already cleaned this up. Huh. But uh, the liner moved on. Yeah. You can actually see all the, see the marks here. Yeah. yeah, look at those scratches. Scratches, yeah. The lions have been killing their share of buffalo in a particular area near the Mubono River, so Doug decides to use one of their fresh kills for bait. Dragging it to a new location provides a fresh scent trail for the lions. It also gives Doug the chance to set up the bait site and shooting blind to take full advantage of the wind and terrain. They secure thorny brush over the kill to discourage vultures. Then put the finishing touches on their ground blind. By the next morning, the lions have reclaimed their kill. Unbelievable ease. I mean, that's the second lion kill that we found. One was that mature cow. And now this bull went further down this wall. Right, exactly. That's true. That's true. They're killing them at every other night. That's, that's correct. Despite all the lion activity, Jack and Doug are not only looking for a mature male, but an older male that belongs to a pride with sub-adult cubs. Making the right decision on both the pride and the male requires plenty of careful observation, sometimes for days on end. And by day's end, Doug has a good evaluation of the pride in this area. I think that's about it, Jack. Too dark. Yeah, it's getting too dark. No, it's a... I'll sneak out the back. Right. That's the what is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Oh, look at that. Look at that. As if their great ears heard Jack's comment, a herd of elephants does in fact show up, in camp, as the hunters are enjoying drinks before dinner. This is when you know you found a really wild part of Africa when the elephants come right into your camp. Early the next morning, on their way to the blind, they spot the patriarch of the pride. It's the big male. There's no question that it's a very large, mature male. The only questions remaining are if the male's age and pride structure make it right to try for him. That's a big 
again. TGT's records show that the big male had been with the pride for at least three years, for he had been the dominant breeder during that time, and the sub-adult cubs could survive without his further protection. The lion is at a point where natural succession within the pride is imminent, and to wait longer would likely guarantee that he would disappear from his current role as a pride leader, only to be taken apart in a solo battle by his mortal enemy, the hyena. Again, lionesses and sub-adults feed at the bait, but the male is nowhere in sight. Unexpectedly, the truck returns with the answer why. They have spotted the big male and some lionesses on yet another fresh buffalo kill and the hunt suddenly turns into a more dangerous game of stalking lions on their kill in the tall grass. Look, look, he's still down. He's done. He's done. He's done. Uh, what? See this lioness watch over yeah, here? Yeah. Watch her. Watch her. Just what? She's. There's another one on the. Look at that tail. Right look at her flicking that tail. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's just let's just wait here, and uh, let's let him settle down. Uh, we may go and get the car and just. That's the one that looks like she's upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy, she's she's mad. This one's moving off. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Let's go, let's just move. So he's down on the grass there somewhere. Look at it. Very slowly he's out there. I think I can see him right yeah, there. Yeah. You yeah. see that? Yeah. Right that's between a, those two yeah. bushes. Yeah, that's him down. Let's just go around him as well. Yeah, I think that's yeah, him. That's him. Let's go. Yeah. I think he's out, man. Yep, he's done. Jack, <laughs> that congratulations. Was great, man. Fantastic. Outstanding. Eh? <laughs> All right. Good job, man. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh, what a good looking cat. Look at the head on this guy. Look at that. See the coloration? Man, look at this all the way down here. Yeah. Man, unload my gun. Look at his teeth, see them? All right. <laughs> that worked out great, right. didn't it? Yeah, that was fantastic. We got good footage of him walking up and... Look at the mane on this guy. Yeah. Man. Look at that. Okay. There's teeth on there. Jambo no trai benda,
Jambo Jambo bwana habari gani nzuri sana wageni wataudisha mbono yetu hakuna matata na bingwa twampenda hakuna matata na simba twaipenda hakuna matata na nyumbu twaipenda hakuna matata You know, of, of all the hunts we had, I mean, it sounds kind of funny, but one of the most challenging was the Impala. Yeah. I mean, we worked our butts off for that guy. Well, he's an nice Impala, Jack. He was, took a while, but we eventually got him. Perhaps the closest thing to a white-tailed deer in Africa, the graceful impala represents the classic plains game of the savanna. There he goes. He's going down. All right. Yeah, I nailed this guy good. I know you hit him. I like that. That's good looking. I'm going to go with 28. Is he hard at the base? Oh, I like the heck of this guy. Yeah, I really like the shape on this guy. You know, I mean, that's just a classic Impala shape. Yeah, he's hard here, huh? Oh, yeah, he's hard. Okay, I'll tell you just now. Nine, eighteen. It's gonna be twenty-six and a half, twenty-seven. Yeah. That's great. 
see that shape though. Yeah, it's a beautiful shape. Beautiful shape. And a good hunt. Heck, we worked yeah. harder for this guy than we did for the lions and the buffalo and everything else. Geez, look at this big guy over here with just his head sticking out. Look at the knobs on the back of his. Yep, you see the head's all flat. Yeah. That's all, that's a sign of a big croc and that big. And they gotta be old. Oh yeah, to get like that. I mean, like that buffalo that we got, that was one old buffalo. I mean, he may not have been the biggest. He was just under 43 inches, but he wouldn't have gotten any bigger because he was probably right. 14, 15 years old. I mean, he was on his last legs. Yeah. We looked at him, his hair was going. Yeah. And uh, it was oh. a great, that's, those that are the was best a fun we should stop. be shooting. Yeah, and, and to be able to crawl in on him like that, I mean, it, you know, where he was when he first saw us, we didn't really have a shot. And I thought they would go before we got a chance to get one, but that crawl was, was pretty fun. Oh, that was an exciting hunt. Yeah. Back on the trail of yet another Cape Buffalo in the tall grass is an open door to adventure. But it comes framed with an underlying tone of danger. Sometimes the dangers are clearly standing there, black, ominous, ready to charge with little reason. Other times, they come where and when you least expect them. Two of the main challenges facing Doug and Jack are first finding the ideal bull within the sprawling herds here, then closing the distance past all those alert eyes, ears, and noses to hopefully get within range. When planning their stalk, they talk of wind, cover, and movement of the herd. There are things they don't talk about, too. Will Doug's big double rifle stop an unexpected charge? Will Jack's shot find its way through the bulk of these beasts to bring one down cleanly? So we'll just go back and loop back around. That's correct. You know, at the moment, I mean, we're wide open. No, we can't cross yeah. this burned area. Yeah, we can't. They'd bust us in no time. Yeah. Pretty good sized group of buffalo. Oh yeah. See how they're all lying down? Yeah. They're really relaxed. Eh? Yeah, maybe we can find a big bull in there. Let's go give it a try. Okay, let's get moving. With precious little time to consider all the questions that can only be answered by actions, they push onward. This wind will give us a little cover walking to it. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, let's go. You know, it's so difficult to tell with these big herds. Yeah. They say right out in the clearance. Right. You actually see them. 
They're pretty relaxed with this wind as well. Yeah. Uh, well, should we leave them then? Yeah, let's head back. Let's keep on The sparse back. cover and more. the large herd yeah. stack the odds in favor of the buffs this time. So Jack and Doug head back. As often happens in hunting, when you least expect it, there they are, standing bigger than life, a pair of massive bulls in some thicker cover. Despite being spotted by the biggest bull that's clearly locked on his position, Jack crawls forward, inching his way closer to have an unobstructed shot at the old bull. They rush forward to make sure the downed bull doesn't get back on its feet. But it's suddenly the companion bull they need to worry about. He doesn't like it, does he? That's a boy. Hold on. They got him, buddy. Okay. Hold on, Jack. I, these things come for you. I tell you, I've had to, I've had to shoot another, another one like this before. Hey. Hey, get it. Safi. Bye. 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 But it's a it's a fantastic Bye. 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 Between the more dangerous hunts, Jack and Doug make time to sample some of the other shooting opportunities Tanzania offers. You can see them there, Jack? Yep. Looks like there's some more moving up from down below. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna start. There's a male right on the far. There he goes. Sims. Yeah. Walking up there. He's starting to move up. There's some of the yep. trees. Well, we're gonna test your new rifle to see how well it will do. Okay, that's just under 300 yards. Okay, and this is sighted in dead on at 200. That's it. That's so great. we should have about a four or five inch drop. We don't have much wind, really. And by the time they get up clear up on top there, I bet we don't have any wind at all. No. Just hardly no. any. Hardly any then. He's got it. <laughs> yeah, this is sort of like an African prairie dog hunt, more or less, except they're baboons <laughs> instead of prairie dogs. But we just picked that guy off right at 300 yards. I'm kind of liking Doug's new rifle. It's a 300 Winchester Magnum, Christensen Arms. I don't think we tested its uh, full capabilities, but it sure did a nice job on that on that baboon. It came right off the top of that rock. Oh, he's bigger than... He's not as big as that one, but... No, he's not as small. i tell you yeah. what, one thing I'm sure of, he's as big as he's gonna get. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but look at that shot, man. Oh, that's just, I mean... Flame over. Look at, that. look at that. Right square in the chest. Can't get better than that. 300 yards. You don't want to sell that gun, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I know Mike wants it now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but look at those teeth, though. 
pretty impressive, huh? You could put a serious bite on you. But the leopards, the leopards, they take these regularly, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, they. No problem. Them. No problems at all. Is that right? Yeah. Pretty neat. Yeah. Well, let's get him on out of here, man. Yeah. On their way back to camp, an uncommon prize crosses their path, and Jack rushes into action. Beautiful. Look at that skin. Wow. That was some fast action. Oh yeah. That was <laughs> you some know, shooting there. You set the sticks up there and I, I think that first shot went low. I think I just skimmed the bottom yeah. part of him with the solid. Yeah. yeah. I saw that hair. Yeah. And then when it took off running, I just got a lucky shot. Wow. Beautiful. One of the things I've always wanted to get was a serval cat, which Doug spotted as he crossed the road. And this happened very quickly. We, uh, we jumped out, moved into the brush about 50 yards, and he picked him up again and set up the, the shooting sticks. And he was just moving across behind the brush. There was really no opportunity to get on him with, with the video, but uh, I took the shot with a solid and, and hit him. Hit him a little bit low. I don't know if it was too low or not, but it hit him, you know, just an inch or so below where I probably needed to. Anyway, we took off running after him, saw him going through the brush again, and I was able to take another shot, which also hit him and, and put him down, but uh, just a beautiful, beautiful animal. Yeah, he's an old cat as well. You look at his yeah, ears. Yeah, You know, he's, he's a big male cat. as well. He's a really big male, this. This is a good-sized yeah. cat. Well, I tell you what, let's get him back to the truck. Okay. No, Jack Hazel had a good, good time as well. And oh, I think he's. Stuff. I think he's had a great, great time in both camps. You know, he had great success in in uh, Mboni, but over here, he got the Lichtensteins, Heart of Beast. He got uh, that that nice topi, and, and, sable, and he got so. a great sable. So yeah. I mean, you know, and, and no telling what he's going to pick up today. I mean, you just can never tell. You never know until that final hour is over. Jack's longtime friend and hunting partner, Ray Mursky, has been enjoying the spectacle of this Tanzanian safari. With a growing list of trophies to his credit, Ray would like to end his hunt with one of the giant Cape buffalo here. Normally difficult to approach, this old bull dozes in the shade as the party moves in for a closer look. Wouldn't you know it, the horns aren't what Ray is looking for. I might be able to hit him. <laughs> I wish they'd all stand around like that. <laughs> The next day, however, Ray and his team strike out in a different area. It's not long before they find buffalo aplenty, and the hunt is on.
They slip ahead of this feeding herd and take time to pick out one of the big old hard-bossed bulls milling around. As if guided by fate, one of the largest bulls eventually feeds into the clearing in front of Ray. The binoculars is the younger one in front of The right and left. The one on the left. Okay, all right. Shoot him again, shoot him again. Oh, yeah, right? Then, yeah. See, see that's that green bush behind there? Yeah, that's great. Right. Good stuff. Oh, man, that's great. You want to go like this? Woo! Hey, look at his ears, baby. I see him. His ears. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> That's nice. That is perfect. trips I've been on to Africa, this was the first time that I've gotten to shoot birds over here. I mean, uh, when I was in Botswana a few years ago, they were supposed to bring a shotgun out and there were Franklin and sand grouse and it was killing me because they forgot the shotgun. But I, I was glad to get some of our major species out of the way with enough time left to be able to go do that. I had a blast doing that. that was oh yeah, it's great. I mean, the bird shooting in Africa on the whole that can be great. And, and this is when there's lots of water. I can't imagine what it would be like later on in the year when the water holes are starting to dry up. I bet it's much more concentrated. It's fantastic. And you know, we were shooting, what, 20, 30 sand grass in yeah. the morning? You know, without, it, without pushing them too hard. Exactly. And then fun. moving out of there and going to another spot. Yeah, that was insane. You shoot Franklin after that. Oh, man. Yeah. Guinea fowl, so it's a fun deal. An avid wing shooter, Jack makes time to sample the world-class sand grouse hunting here. Like dove hunting back in his home state of Texas, morning and evening setups near water provide breakneck action. Plus, sand grouse are known as some of the finest table fare in the world.
can't believe that. All right. We've shot about 20, 25 of these sand grouse. I think we could stay here and shoot a whole lot more, but uh, we've got to go get some spur fowl and some Franklin. This has been an unbelievable shoot. And these birds just keep coming. I mean, you can see these big groups over here still flying in. But we're going to get out of here so they can water and uh, go try to get some, some Franklin and some spur fowl. Are these all the same species of sand grouse? No, or? Jack, you've got two here. Like that's, got... that's a yellow throated. Right. You can see. Yeah, he's got a yellow throat on him. Man, that's a beautiful, beautiful bird. bird yeah, and wow. he's the bigger. He's the bigger of the two. And then this one. And then is... this is the chestnut-bellied sandgrass. Man. And he's the first one to come in. Really, they come in yeah, earlier. They come in earlier, and then the yellow-bellied, he comes in last. Well, I tell you, that was pretty impressive last night when they served us those kebabs at dinner. These things are just unbelievable eating. Yeah, they're good. They're good eating. So yeah. we'll do the do the same again tonight. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> Good. That was excellent. Well, that was a good shoot. That was yeah. outstanding. Thanks a lot. Hey, let's uh, gather these up and see if we can get some spur yep. fowl or something. Definitely. Let's go and do that. All right. On the way back, they try for some of the other bird shooting opportunities here. Those guys are big. That's nice looking, huh? Yeah, yeah. And, and this one is just called spur fowl. Yeah, this is spur fowl. Yeah, gray spur fowl. Good, Good looking bird. Fowl. Look at these oh, yeah. chest feathers here. Yeah, he's, uh, I bet these are good eating. Oh, yeah. Can we get him to cook some of those up, you think? Yep, tonight we're having some snacks. Some larger birds, such as these guinea fowl, would rather run than fly. So Jack gives them reason to take wing. Big bird. It's going to be some more good eating tonight. This one doesn't look to be too terribly old, judging by that that uh, top knot on him. He should be great eating. With one final morning to try for sand grouse, Jack returns to the watering spot. And like before, the wing shooting action is fast and furious. Get him, get him. Yes. Swing behind us. All right. On the right side. Man, what a nice shoot. We got about another 20 birds for the pot. These things are just outstanding table fare. And uh, they're awfully fun to shoot as well. This has been a great, great spot for us. We've shot it two days. We're not gonna shoot here again. These birds need some rest. And uh, we might find another spot. We've got one more morning where we can go out and try this again. But man, that was a lot of fun.
Part of any hunt is sharing campfire stories. I gotta tell y'all a funny, a funny story. After we shot the wildebeest, we were looking for buffalo, and we drove for about 30 minutes. And and uh, William, and George, and all of us were in the back of the truck. And all of a sudden, we heard this. The damnest wheel you ever saw in your life. Yeah. And here comes about an eight ton elephant. <laughs> oh. I mean, she was mad. And then... Doodly little baby. Oh, I got him. He's going to come again. Let's go, let's go, let's go. She chased the truck like, you know, like she was going to destroy the truck. Is that right? Well, she was going to. I mean, she was mad. She was just, just boiling mad. She too? Squealing, yeah. squealing the whole thing. Was she shaking her head? Shaking her head. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's a real it's sign of aggression. Ears were flying everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, was, it was worth a trip here just to see the two ele the elephants oh, charge. Geez. It was about <laughs> seven or eight, nine elephants with uh, babies. This afternoon, we kind of took it easy and, and, and uh, took a nap. We left out of here about four o'clock. What's that word he was yelling at us? Nyoka. Nyoka. Which is snake, yeah. Snake. Where is she? Where is she? Huh? Where is she? I don't know if I'm not here. Yeah, I'm not here. He's not worried. That's the problem. Yeah, he, he will catch it. Then. So he went in under these rocks, and we got the shooting sticks and tried to dig him out from under there. Oh, there he is. I tell you what, when those little guys spit at you, it gets your attention a little bit. Uh, can't tell how big he is, but he can spit about eight feet, I can tell you that much. But uh, I, got that, I, want to show I that promise you, later. man, I would have fainted. I would have, <laughs> I would have so gone fainted. So cool. I don't think you got one that time. I've really enjoyed being around this river because some of this hunting, you know, with the crocodiles and the hippos, you know, I've never had an opportunity to do that, but to be able to fly out of one camp, land over here, organize our gear and be out and get that hippo the first afternoon. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, we done. We did well there. And then some nice old bull as well. It's a good bull. You know, I don't know how you can really judge them any more than we did other than making sure that it, that it's, that it is a bull. But the big challenge is to get him nailed in the head and, and, and that's it. you know, not wound him. So, and, I mean, that was a fantastic shot. I guess the only way you would try to hunt for a trophy, one of those, you'd literally have to see him. Yeah, open you his see mouth. all his lips. You know, you actually see those teeth almost sticking through sometimes. Really, really lifting the lip up. up. Yeah, that's it. Though they appear as harmless as oversized pigs bobbing in the water, hippos are in fact one of the more dangerous creatures in Africa. Surprisingly fast for their size and equipped with bone-crushing tusks, they are formidable beasts, especially dangerous when encountered on land. Jack and the party leave the Mubono camp and head for the next leg of their Tanzania adventure. Their destination is the Ugala River Camp with a new host of hunting opportunities.
After getting settled, they strike out along the river to get acquainted with their new surroundings for the coming days and to see what the riverbank offers in the way of game. There's no question that this place is teeming with hippos. Now if Jack can only find a good bull that will offer a clean shot, plus the opportunity to recover it without trouble from the local crop population. 19, 20 hippos in this pool. Surprising hippos at a distance when they can easily escape into the safety of the water presents marginal risk to the hunters. Startling one of these creatures at close range on land, however, gives good reason to have fingers poised on triggers. He's laying up on the bank, you know, because he's hurt. With his wife, Chris, along on the trek, Jack is especially cautious with gun at ready. He's just a bull that's been in a bad fight. He's been in a bad fight. He's got cuts all on his back and blood. <laughs> just been in a fight. Yeah, it's real neat. I thought for a minute he was going to come. Did you just Oh, yeah. Let's go see what. Never exposes himself totally. Just half in the water and half, half in the water, yeah. Huh. That's neat. Looks healthy to me. Is that a male or a female? Is she pregnant? Yeah. Look at that stomach's damn near dragging the ground. Huh? sticking out look like a snake at first. It does too. He it's doesn't even know we're here. <laughs> oh look, he's coming out. Look how wow, fast that's he can neat. Man, look at him go. Boy, they move so fast good. when they get going. They do that. That's really cool. <laughs> After a short rest at camp and a change of clothes, 
they head out in the afternoon sun to try for a hippo on a different section of water. So come what's back and we'll come back and get him later. All right. Because you know he goes, go, he sinks for a few hours, but he will be up in the wall. So. Sounds good. Yeah, that's good. Got some bait working now. <laughs> they return later to recover the hippo, which proves to be as unique as the animal itself. They're just going to cut um, just a place to slip that rope in, in through yeah. the hide there. In through the hide there. That's what they're doing now, Jack. And then, uh, yeah, we'll hook it up to the vehicle and pull them out. But you will, you'll, you'll hook it to a foot or something when it gets over here, right? Uh, or will that yeah. do it? Well, it should do it. You know, once it's going, yeah. you just got to keep on pulling. Gotcha. You got to keep that momentum. His teeth here, that's just impressive. Look at that. Well, he would cut you in two, wouldn't he, if he got a hold of you? Look at that. Yeah. You see his teeth Ooh. And not monsters, but he's a mess. He's pretty darn nice. Yeah. Uh, but you see the size of that head? Wow. Right. Yeah, and the shot was on the other side. Yeah. Now that's all rips just yeah, from... Yeah, that's crocket. Yeah. See this? Mm-hmm. Look at that. Oh, it looks like a giant armadillo's foot. Huh. Feel that skin. It's kind of rubbery yeah, feeling. Yeah, it is. That's it, what it definitely. That leopard coming in there that evening, I never expected that cat to come in so early. I mean, it was the afternoon after the first hit, and you, those guys got the blind built, and it couldn't have been 45 minutes, and, and that cat was in the tree. That's it. it. I mean, we had that blind built by, what, 420? So we made a fair bit of noise building that blind, as you always do. But that cat, I mean, he was hungry as well. You could hear the guineas the whole time we were building the blind, not more than a couple of hundred yards away. And that, that cat had to be laying right there during that whole process. That's correct, and you could hear him as he got closer. There was a Franklin there as well. They just, so, you could follow, you could almost audibly follow his movement towards that tree. That's it, that's it. We were only seconds away from getting him climbing the tree. Oh yeah, and that blind, I mean, was only 35 yards away, if that. Yeah. So we were close. Real close as well, so huh. did another good job of keeping quiet there. Ooh, that's a big boy coming that's in there. Look at those guys. Wow. They're all starting to come in now. That's a pair of big boys. For pound, Africa's leopard is the most deadly predator to stalk the savanna. It's a remarkable blend of graceful beauty, ghostly stealth, and savage power. It is cunning and reclusive, and always a marvel to see. Normally, 
Solitary killers in the darkness of night, hunting leopards requires baiting setups in the perfect tree with some other unique twists. You can see he'll sit on that other branch, like the guy sitting right now when he's tying it up, and that's where that cat's going to feed from. So he's going to lie on there. He almost stands up and he'll pull that bait up onto that branch. But I guess this grass pretty well keep any of the birds off of it? or Yeah, Jack, it's just to keep the birds off and, you know, it's from above they're not going to see it. So that leopard will just pull it right out of there? Oh yeah, he just gets right in there and feeds. it doesn't worry him. As the afternoon sun fades the landscape into softer tones of golds and greens, the sharp calls of birds alert Doug to an approaching predator. This young male makes a spectacular sight perched in the tree. But it's not the mature cat that Jack and Doug are looking for, so they settle back to enjoy the rare show. It's not powerful enough to pull up the heavy bait to eat, so it uses its claws and some acrobatics to get at the bait. As Jack and Doug enjoy the antics of the young leopard, they know from its presence and actions that a dominant male probably isn't visiting this bait setup. So the next afternoon, with Chris and company, they head to a new setup further down the Mubono River. Despite good sign in the area, the fresh bait appears mostly untouched. It's only 35 yards from the blind, so our hunters wait quietly for the evening to close in. Long before sunset, and when they might expect a leopard to show, the birds again speak the universal language of the jungle. A cat is coming. And this time, it's a big one. This one's a beautiful large male, 
blind in the right eye. Given that Chris is wearing a patch over her right eye due to an ulcer, Jack takes this as a sign and decides to take advantage of the opportunity. There he goes. Right, man. That's a killing shot, that. Yep. Yeah. Cool. One minute to go, huh? Fantastic. Let's, Let's go. Wait. Just wait. I want to wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Yeah. I want to go see him right now. I think he's toast, man. Yeah, he's just never know with these cats. Let's just get up on him. Man, look how pretty that thing is. It's beautiful. Let's see. Good luck. Hmm? Beautiful cat. Look at that shot. And look at that knee. Yeah. Good yeah. shot. Come on. Uh, pretty cat. Oh my look gosh. That's awesome. That's a good lovely thing. Got it. It was so pretty. Oh, that light. That light, huh? that light on it. <laughs> Yeah, and get, get mine out of the blind, too. Man, what a beautiful animal. Oh yeah, my Tommy. How could I forget my Tommy? Those are cool animals, you know, I mean, that wasn't uh, really the most exciting hunt, but that's what I consider like an animal of opportunity. And even if he didn't have super horns, my biggest interest in him after eating the one that Ray shot was to get some more of that table fare. I mean, yeah. that Damn. was really good. Yeah, they're magnificent eating. And it's just a beautiful little animal. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's uh, the colorations on it are just outstanding. So I was happy with that, you know? I mean, it was good. Yeah. And it was a fun hunt as well. Affectionately known as Tommy's, the Thompson's gazelle is one of Africa's most delicate and strikingly beautiful antelope. These little guys are open country speedsters with amazing agility and reflexes that can foil almost any predator. They are also one of the tastiest prizes in the savanna, and because of this, they are prime table fare for two kinds of predators here, the lightning-fast cheetahs 
and our hunters. I don't think so. Okay, it's Tommy time. Circling in for a shot through the tall grass can hold some hidden surprises. Snipe oh, sh grab the stick. Get the stick. Let's the stick get this guy. And I think, I think he's dead. You know, he's acting dead, not right. And then you get away. And he's recently. Recent there we go. Okay. He's a beautiful specimen. Yeah. Absolutely magic. Now that would give you a nasty bite right there. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that uh, blood oozing. That's probably venom, isn't it? Yeah, venom or even from what he's killed. Eh? Yeah. Maybe, you know, they often regurgitate when they're under stress or anything. Yeah. They'll regurgitate their food as well. Yeah, he's acting like he's completely dead, but he would yeah. completely yeah. nail you. All right, cool. Okay, let's keep going. Better to see him before he, he sees us. Second one, I, I you know I could uh, tell yeah. I pulled the first one, and I could I told you as we walked up it was going to be high. Right on the button there. Yeah. Hey. Excellent. Look at that guy. Nice, nice and heavy as well. You know he's got nice little hook that you turn on the end there. Interesting. Well, yeah. they are pretty. But that's a nice. Huh. And you see the gland here as well. That's how they mark there. Really? There you are. That's a huge gland. I've never seen a preorbital gland that big before. That's the. So what are they? They'll rub that on the bushes and stuff. Yeah, huh? almost on a blade of grass. You know, really? On the grass. And... You can see how he's been rubbing on uh, on all this. I mean, he's got green stuff all the way up his horns there. Yeah, he's been rubbing on trees and stuff as he comes through from the park. And, uh, nine, ten, eleven. He's about. 12 13. and a half, 13. Huh? You're about 13, this guy. Yeah? Yeah. They're just neat little animals. Yep, yeah, that they are. You can't, uh, you can't weigh 45 pounds, I wouldn't think. Yeah, not much more than that. Birds flew, and that was it. Well, Jack, you know these crocodiles are fed, and they're going to go and lay up in the banks around here. So let's walk up. The wind's coming down this way, and let's see what we can find. All right. So you think now that they're off the bait, they're going to go lay up in the banks, and that what does that do? Does that help them digest their food, or yeah, yeah, really? You know they they've got to heat up as well, but it helps them digest their food. I'm ready, man. Okay.
A prehistoric throwback from Jurassic time, the African crocodile is exclusively programmed for two things, killing and eating whatever is careless enough to venture near the water's edge. Pretty nice, pretty nice croc, man. Yeah, he's a nice croc, I'd say he's about 14 foot. 14? We're looking as well for a croc where it's really dark as well. Yeah. So, let's have a look, you know, they're two big croc in the stretch of water. We can chuck a bait and watch them and compare. And see them, so. All right. He looks much darker than that last one. Yeah, yeah. Now he is. I mean, that's what we're looking for. You see that snout as well. So. Right, yeah, his head looks bigger. Yeah. So Where do you want to go to try to get a better look at him? I'm just going to keep, keep going around slightly. Let's go. These giant reptiles have been known to snap their deadly jaws on plains game animals many times their weight, dragging them quickly into a watery grave. Though simply seeing one is no great feat here, where they are abundant. But actually making a killing headshot on one on land and on one of these 14-foot giants is a different matter altogether. So it'll be pretty close to where it was. You see blood in the water? Uh -huh. It's a good sign. Okay. Let's see what we've got to have, huh? Ooh, look at that. Oh yeah. That's a nice crock. <laughs> no ground <laughs> shrinkage there. No, no ground not shrinkage. At all. Not at look all. Look at that guy. Yeah. He's there impressive. Boy. Now this is a serious crop. Look at that. Ooh. Hey. That's neat. Dang, it would be scary to be this close. You know, it feels scary even though he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He's up here. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Uh. Yeah, you push yep. on the muscle there. Like right there. Yeah, there. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it's wild. Oh my god. <laughs> the way you check though is their eyes. If you poke them in the eye and they blink, it's not a good sign. Jack, we're just going to put a rope around the neck and pull him out of here. Okay. And get uh, him up where we can get some pictures. Get some pictures, yeah. That'd be so, great. Yeah. The other ones were so much lighter. So much lighter. Uh, and that's a sign of an old croc as well when they get dark like that. Actually, he's a 14 footer, I would say. It's, that's stretching it to the max. I'm happy with 13.9. Yeah. We've looked at a lot of crocs, you know. Oh, this yeah. Is definitely we have looked. We have looked at a lot of crocs and covered a lot of country. That one day we had to walk about 12 miles, 10 or 12 miles along the river, and the other day was about six. Mm, real. It's a nasty piece of work, isn't it? I mean, I mean. And look at these front ones right in here. Once those things latch on. There's no way to get away. I mean, that's no, it. No. Whatever, he's whatever, yeah. whatever he catches is finished. I'm not going to be close to the water anytime soon. And then it's just a matter, you know, he, he, he pulls you down and you drown. I mean, they don't even have to kill you. Right. He lets the water kill you and then he goes and stuffs you somewhere until you start decaying. And then when you're soft enough, he starts ripping you to pieces. This decay has got on his Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's... Oof. You Man. see his teeth starting to regrow here, he's busting right. his teeth up. And, That's yeah. just impressive. I mean, what a creature. No wonder these things have been around for millions of years. Yeah. You know? Pretty historic, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, that is cool. Well, should we go and take some...